Welcome to the big British castle It's time for Adam and Joe to broadcast on the radio There'll be some music and some random talking in between And then eventually the whole thing will just end that's uh, Susie and the Banshees there with Hong Kong Garden. It's all very exciting. So I was just chatting outside with uh, James Corden and George Lamb. That's how I, I roll. I hear nothing. Uh, you know, I just like a little chit-chat with some attractive, famous people. There we go. Uh, this is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. This studio smells of cologne now and man products. It smells of success is what it smells because of. Because it's the first time we've done our show after Mr. Lamb's yeah. programme. And it smells of men's grooming products. <laughs> it smells nice. Usually we come here, no disrespect to the DJs that we followed in the past, but sometimes we come in here, it smells a little studenty and funky. I, d- I disagree. Do you know what I'm saying? I think it smells lovely. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be insulting towards the DJs who we take over from. That's what I'm saying. I said no disrespect to them. I did a little yeah, no disrespect good, disclaimer. But, but there's definitely but then a, I said they stink. a manly smell in here. <laughs> How are you doing, listeners? Very nice to have you along. Uh, how are you feeling getting up an hour later, Joe? D- uh, discombobulated. I feel perky! Oh. I'm overexcited. I need Jeepers. to be taken down a peg. Oh, I'll do that. Will you? Yeah, Go on, yeah, try, yeah, try. Yeah. I bet you can't. Shut up! Oh, that's depressing. Um, no, it's good, isn't it? I was confused. I didn't know whether my feet were attached to my ears. I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. It was confusing. I woke up at the normal time anyway. Did you? Yes. Did you go to bed later? Yes. I went to bed an hour later. I went to bed an hour later. I went to bed at one fifteen. I wrote a song about fairies. And then I did a performance piece to myself in front of the fridge. I stuffed my pillow with little dead fairies. Tiny dead fairies. The irony of the fairies being dead was not lost on me. I was, I was, I was, I was, I was. And then I did some mime. So we've got a packed show for you, listeners. Packed with what? We're not going to say. But it's certainly packed. (laughs) It's packed to the gills with guts. The guts of the show absolutely are top guts, and they're coming up very soon. But Now, wait, wait, wait. wait. Some some listeners might be confused about the status of Black Squadron. Black Squadron. If you're tuning in for the first time, I don't know why that would be, because we've only shifted forward an hour. Well, there might be a lot of um, George Lamb listeners who are listening to us. trying to make the transition. We have an elite listening force who uh, listen to this show usually between 9am and 9.30am. We regarded that as a particularly courageous and effortful time to listen to a radio programme. We christened them Black Squadron, and each week they would do an extraordinary testing task. So, obviously, does the new 10am start... This isn't a very good sentence, is it? The question that is uh, provoked... I want you to finish the other one. Does the new 10am start... (laughs) Does the new 10am start change the status of Black Squadron? Turned out fine. It was obviously at the beginning. It wasn't very good. But uh, does it? Do you think? Who's left the phone off the hook? It's the whistle wazzle from the phone. Thank you. Do you think it changes the status of Black Squadron? I personally don't believe it does. I think it, may, it turns them into a different force. I think they've had an extra hour in bed. They're that mm, much mm, sharper. They're mm. ready for manoeuvres. They're a sort of. Are they a sort of modern? You know, are they like the police force when they let short people in, or you know, when they change the entry criteria for oh, a particular division? Yeah. that are usually quite hardcore. And make it. Do you know, like when they accepted uh, people into the SAS who we, you know, were maybe less muscly than the other ones, right? And uh, women and gays, that kind of thing. (laughs) Or community policemen. Well, that's the most obvious change of policy in in recent years, has been gays in the military, right? Right. And uh, what about short people? Are short people now allowed to be cops? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is that a good thing? There used to be a height limit, didn't there? Did and they? then they took it away. Could yeah. I be a cop? Mm, there are limits. <laughs> Just no, You might not get noticed. Short you get snowed up. under during <laughs> protests. <laughs> <laughs> Stepped on. Oh, so are you going to uh, issue the command for Black Squadron then? Let's have a record and let's discuss it. All right, then. Here's Mumford & Sons. It's your favourite uh, 70s sitcom band. Yeah, I love that 70s sitcom. This is Winter Winds. There's a great deal of confusion amongst the listenership. There's a lot of confusion amongst Black Squadron. A lot of them woke up and were confused by hearing George Lamb's show. They, they didn't understand. They were... They've been trained to expect a command at that time in the morning, and now the pivot around which their psychology hinged. Can you hinge around a pivot? Mm -hmm. I think you probably can not. 
Uh, it has been... Oh, now I've got to extend the metaphor. <laughs> anyway, it's all gone wrong, and they're very confused. Again, you know, imagine the Manchurian candidate. They've all been carefully programmed after months, and now their signals are going wonky, and their domestic behaviour is becoming erratic. It's as if... It's like in Westworld, you know, with Yul Brenner? Yeah. Where they're all robots... Um, you know, people are going around their kitchens with their families, doing their breakfast routine, but something's not right. Sure. Something's slightly skew if little sparks and whiffs of smoke coming out of people's ears. Uh -huh. You know, uh, something's off. Something's... Well, it's because the show's an hour later. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. But Black Squadron, I don't know. I really feel for you. I do know that I feel for you. Yeah. I feel for you. I'm confused. We're confused as well. Sing We've been... I Feel For You by Chaka Khan. I feel for you. Quack, quack, quack. Yeah, I did the synthy bit as well. I think I loved you. Chugger, ah. chugger. But we were thinking of different names for Black Squadron. We thought maybe if we changed the name, it might help. Black Squadron Light, Black Squadron Zero. Diet Squadron. Diet Squadron. But I don't know, it, it just doesn't feel right. I think maybe we should, for a week or so, until we get used to this, mm -hmm. just let Black Squadron wander around. <laughs> bumping you into know, things. Bumping into things with, with an old bit of stale bread in the pocket. Yeah. A rancid piece of bacon halfway up the arm. Manky egg in the mouth. Some manky egg in the mouth. Do you think, or should we issue a command? Of course we should issue a command. All right, let's issue a command and see what kind of response we get. And the level of response we get will dictate whether we continue the squadron. Yeah. We are now led by the squadron. We need stats. You love stats. Last week we got 140 responses to the squadron command. That was pretty good. Okay, so we're going to give you a command, squadron. This is to see how together you are, to see whether we should continue this. If we get no response, then we may have to... Uh, abandon you the, all. Well, that's right. Yeah, Adam that's and I may have to, to come it? round to your house and execute you. That's what you. it comes down to on this show. We'll kill imaginary dogs, <laughs> uh, <laughs> listeners. We'll kill anyone. Well, hang on. There's a difference between an imaginary dog and actual listeners. Oh, uh, what? Uh, yeah, you're right. So, like, killing a real so person. you should probably take that back. Compared to killing an imaginary dog. That's it's, bad, isn't it? Yeah, it's the imaginary thing that makes the world I got world carried difference. away. Yeah. Listen, we won't actually kill you. What will we do to them, then? How will we punish them? We'll think about that when we see what the level of response is. The, the text number is 64046. We, we're going to issue a command. We'd like you to take a photograph of yourself performing the command and send it to us on 64046. The best pictures, or pretty much all the pictures that are fit for publication, will be published on our blog, so you've got to be ready for that. As soon as Joe issues the command, we will blast into the first free play of the day. This is something I've chosen for you listeners. It's a piece of vintage Pink Floyd from their first album. It's called Lucifer Sam. It's about a cat, Joe. I thought oh, might, I like catties. You like cats, so I thought you might enjoy it. Uh, so, Joe, issue the command, if you will, please. Hey, what's your cat voice? And, and I, I, oh, I haven't if you were yet. to talk to a cat, how like would you talk in. to a cat? Oh, um... Oh, the way you go, the way you go. Is that your cat Oh, voice? diggly, diggly, diggly. Oh, oh, I don't oh, patronise oh, cats, I just oh, talk to them like No, this equals. is when it's in a good... In a good mood. Right. Oh, woozy, woozy, woozy. Oh, doogie, 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 doogie. Hello, son. As I want to talk to you. Anyway, here comes the command. Don't forget, text will be charged at your standard message rate, 64046. You can email as well if you have a digital camera, adamandjoe.6music at bbc.co.uk. Stand by. Here is the command. Black Squadron this week. We would like you to photograph yourself in some bin bag fashion. Funky. That's The Meters with Sissy Strutt. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Very nice to be with you listeners. What would uh, you do, Adam, if, if you were in Black Squadron rather than a commander of Black Squadron and you received the command bin bag fashion? What would you do? I'd strip down so that I was nude. Mm -hmm. I would uh, tear up some black bin bags. Mm. What do you mean, tear them up? Uh, well, I'd probably little use, pieces. I'd probably use scissors, actually, and I no, I would cut down the seam, right, to open them up. Mm -hmm. speed, uh, speed this up. Uh, I would wrap them around <laughs> myself with gaffer tape. <laughs> really? So you'd wrap? You'd just wind gaffer tape round your? Well, torso. You told me to speed it up. I had lots of. <laughs> I, I mean, I'd get much more well, creative. When I said speed it up, I didn't mean like tell lies. What do you want me to do? Do you want me to go into my ideas, or do you want me to keep it speedy? Both. I'm not going to do either now. I'd make a little cocktail dress. Well, you know I'd what? make a cocktail dress. <laughs> All right? My nipples would be showing. I'd cut little holes for them. Now you're talking. It would be short. It would be very short. It would be like a Roman toga, but a kind of one that Mark Armand might wear. 
because um you know i think that a lot of people have taken this command in in an obvious but very good way yeah you know popped a couple of armholes in the sort of bottom corners of the bag yeah flipped it upside down made a head hole and worn it like a kind of a toga or tunic yeah uh whereas this couple here let me see if i can find their names uh paul and sarah in crofton park in london paul seems to have made himself a very attractive bin bag tie a sort of skinny tie. Oh, he looks which like is, he's in the strokes. You know, there's minimalism there that I think is very imaginative. And his lady partner there uh, is... Is that a bit of bin bag? It's, is that a lime green bin bag? She's got a green bin bag around her neck. As a kind of neckerchief. Yeah. Uh, a necker scarf. That's fancy. Also, they have... Haughty, <laughs> that is fancy. Look at this guy. Looks, That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> he's stolen my idea, the cocktail dress. He's anonymous. He's this got, guy's anonymous. He's, he's got, got a, a beard. Big, He's done fashion. Oh, no, Simon and Jancy in... They framed out the bottom. In, in Hitchin, maybe? He looks like Colin Hitch. and Justin fused into one man. Maybe it's Simon and Jancy in Hitch. Maybe they're in the film Hitch. And he's got white gaffer tape to make a cross. A sort of George's cross on his, on his chest. This is very good, Black Squadron. I mean, it seems as if their powers have not diminished oh <laughs> there's a lady there <laughs> sat next to the bin just yes. is that a lady or a man it's hard to tell it's a little out of focus it's but a man, it's maybe. very attractive i personally i wouldn't care he's he's it was nude. dark that guy's I, nude and he's sitting in a bin bag <laughs> next to a bin and a load of old bottles i mean bin bags attract bins <laughs> like magnets or flies around poopoo <laughs> he's got no respect for himself actually. someone's made bin bag shoes look at that that's yeah. very kind of um medieval or that sort of good uh uh what's it called festival wear you know if you yeah. go to a festival and don't have your boots then you make some makeshift that's the kind of thing we'll all be wearing boots. in a few years john what when the apocalypse happens when the apocalypse comes around when the numbers run out yeah, exactly. when the mayan calendar when Nick Cage ticks off a cliff <laughs> 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 well this is an extraordinary response black squadron ah oh, look at this one what's sorry that? that's a nude one <laughs> almost <laughs> Very, uh, he's wearing i tell you what he's done he's got, he's a, got a sort of, of a bib it's like you know when you have a um th people don't wear them anymore but when you dress wear black tie yeah you have a kind of weird bib like a fake shirt and do you remember in a, like old time comedy films it rolls up and That's binds right. people in the face yes i do he's sort of made a bin bag version of that but he's nude and the bib is going down just far enough to protect his uh, modesty. It's the sort of suit that um, Sasha Baron Cohen wore when he was promoting Borat. Remember that all-in-one little A little thong? like that. That's Anon. Very nice. Anyway, keep those coming in. So, Joe, we've had a message that came through during the week. This mm. is from Charlotte. In just the one. Charlotte from Catford. Actually, a few people messaged in, but I'm going to read out Charlotte's one. She said, Dear Buckles and Cornballs, well, mainly Cornballs, mm. is that your voice on the <gasps> Terry's Chocolate Orange advert? I got ten pounds riding on it. I got ten pounds. I got ten pounds riding on it. Say yes, and I'll halve the money, smiley emoticon. Big hugs and huge kisses, she's giving oh. me there. And uh, there's another strange emoticon underneath that looks like a... Uh, I know what that one a means. A groin. <laughs> yes. That's, and, uh, well, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so is that you, um, Terry? Yeah. The chocolate orange yes, man. she's a tenner richer. Well, you're a fiver richer, boy. She Am said I? she's going to halve the money. No. Yeah. Party time, party time, five pound party time. Imagine all the things that I can buy with five pounds. This One pound, two pound, three pound, four pound, five pound, five pound, five, five pound, five pound party time. Can't buy five pound party. That's a fun party. I'm going to come to that one. Mm. Um, so, Charlotte from Catford, you have uh, said that you've got ten pounds. That's a bet riding on it. She says she'll halve the money. You have to halve the money now, right? Because you, you don't like people that Welsh on bets and things like that. I hate... I Well, mm, no, I don't. You hate the Welsh is what you're going to say. No, I was not going to say that. I, ha I am Welsh. <laughs> you are Welsh. That's right. Um, Rodri Cornwall. <laughs> that's why I'm called Cornish. That's my Welsh <laughs> accent. Um, so are you going to make her give you the money? I'm going to make her give me the money. I mean, even though that's grotesquely unfair, right? I'm going to make you give me the money. You're a professional. You don't necessarily need five pounds from Charlotte and Catford. But still, know. you're going to force her to give it you. Maybe she should bring it to the studio. That's a good idea. Would you be up for that, Charlotte? And she could count it out into my palm in coins and the audience would be able to hear them. Or she could buy you something with the five pounds. What no, about no, that? No, Christmas no, present? No, 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 you want no, the cash? No, no. I want the cash. Fair yeah, enough. we can go and spend it together, maybe. That's a good idea. Good party times, time, party time. time. Five pound party time. <laughs> so uh, get in touch, Charlotte. Let, let us know what you want to do. But one way or the other, we're getting five quid off you. Here's Aztec Camera. See, there used to be a breakfast show called Good Morning Britain, right? And that came out at around that time. 
That's not an Aztec camera record I remember. Mick Jones an Aztec camera, that is. Is it? Yeah. Anyway, listeners, we have overshot our news uh, slot, so we're going to have to get into the news. Black Squadron, you can stand down. Um, and uh, maybe, should we play the jingle for them now? Let's have it. Hey, Black Squadron! Stand down, your work is done. You've earned yourself a nice warm bath. And maybe a nice little bun. It's the news. On digital radio and online. BBC Six Music. That was Run DMC listen, there. Listen, I've got an idea for the past. Uh huh. Like, if there was an award ceremony in the past and Tricky came on to present an award, yeah. my idea is you play that song. Oh. Yeah, this is like. Mm, when was Tricky at his. Peak. Fame peak. Fame peak. Uh, mid 90s? Well, that's an idea for the mid 90s. Yeah. Do you I, think it's worth. That's a great idea. Do you think it's worth trying to build a time machine and going back in time just to implement that idea in the past? Definitely. Yes, yeah. definitely, definitely, definitely. That would good, be a good, great good. Uh, show, a guy who goes back and just jazzes up award ceremonies. Yeah. <laughs> what would it be called? Uh, the Ceremonizer. Yes. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> and uh, Stuart back. Copeland could do the music. <laughs> Yeah. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Your award ceremony lacks sparkle. I come from the future to give you some ideas. <laughs> what a brilliant idea for the past. They'd put that on Dave mm. at some point, wouldn't they? Uh, so, shall we have a bit of retro text the nation? Yes, please. Cause not the live show. I used to feel like you'd frustrate. Whoa, 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 what the heck is going on there? What Look, the we can't stand Jack for that, Hawkins? James. Okay. Let's try that again. If that happens one more time, James Sterling, you can get your coat and wrap it round me. Because I'm I a little like to silly. To Adam and Joe, but I listen to the podcast, not the live show. I used to feel acute frustration because I couldn't join in with text the nation. But now my worries have disappeared. <laughs> It's all because we've started at 10 today. We're, we're very confused. Our, space t- our position in the space-time continuum has been disrupted. No one knows quite what they're doing. But Retro Text the Nation, of course, is the part of the programme where you, we read your contributes to last week's... Contributes? Contributes. Contributions. That's what the kids say. Yeah, to last week's Text the Nation. Yeah, and nice and contribute guy. Thanks. And the theme was amazing parties, the most incredible imaginative ways to make a party really incredible and imaginative. And we got some su- superb responses. Uh, for instance, listen to this one. Dear Adam and Joe, a few weeks ago I went to visit a friend who's at university in Bournemouth. He whisked me away to a party that some of his course mates were throwing. The purpose of the party was to watch Das Boot, the original uncut version, which, for those of you that don't know, is the 293-minute original television version of Das Boot. As it was a house full of model makers, they'd completely kitted out the inside of the house to look like a German U-boat, using cardboard, duct tape, and anything else they could get their hands on. Wow. Included was a periscope, tiny doorways between rooms, and an array of pipes labelled in German, the best of which was a Schwarzwalde Kerstorte, Black Forest Gatto pipe. It was a very surreal and enjoyably... It was a very surreal and enjoyably experience, and it made me miss my university days. Six hugs and seven kisses, Andrew Fensom in London. Now, the bit of genius there, I think, is to make doors smaller using cardboard. So presumably you get big sheets of cardboard and then cut a sort of um, oval-shaped portal in yep. it and stick it over the door. So everybody has to climb through a very little bit. Nice. That's brilliant, don't that would, you It would get kicked apart a little bit. By you. But other people who were able to behave themselves would enjoy the I doors. I don't mean deliberately. <laughs> I mean accidentally and stuff. Oh, there's no drink at the party. Is there no, no, no drink, drink in the submarine? And certainly no I, drugs. I, I drinking in the submarine. Uh, because we have not yet had our engines crippled and sunk to the bottom of the ocean, then we will start to drink when we realise we are going to suffocate and die at the bottom of the ocean in that boot. Right, right. Because they do get up to some fun stuff. I mean, you could also make it a bit like um, the Widowmaker K19. Yes. And you could have some nuclear... Why wouldn't you? 
have some nuclear fun. There could be a room with a little nuclear reactor yes. in it. Everyone crawls in there and comes That's out a good puking. Idea. <laughs> and comes out puking. That's what happens at parties well, anyway. <laughs> so instead of the actual nuclear reactor, right, you have a big you have a big bowl with some punch that's way too strong. That's a very good Everyone idea. Everyone has to go in there and try and fix <laughs> the reactor. And comes I've been poisoned. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying. Oh, what a party. Awesome. That's a brilliant idea for a party. Yeah. Das Boot. Very good film as well. If you haven't seen Das Boot, maybe start with the theatrical version, but that's a classic. Um, here's a message right now from Billy in Glasgow. Hello, Adam and Joe. I thought I'd share my amazing party idea from earlier this year. On the September the 9th of this year, brackets 999, my girlfriend and I decided we'd have an emergency-themed party to Ooh. celebrate this unique date. We made plans for emergency-themed decorations and costumes and encouraged any party guests to dress appropriately. On the day of the party, I excitedly hurried to a joke shop for, for some props to enhance my amazing and unique idea. I was shocked and disappointed to find a queue leading out of the shop and down the street full of other people who quite obviously stole my idea. We had the party anyway. It was wicked we've planned a few well hey hang on a second yeah. what like other people had the same idea or everyone pe- was having an emergency or people party. Knew. were they yeah on 999 well you're not having one <laughs> <laughs> i don't know it's really you didn't see the date 999 and think this is a good day for an emergency party <laughs> come no. to my emergency party pom pom i feel like i'm in the minority though yeah did you Sure, I did. Sure, you did. Everybody did. There were big queues outside all outside what shops. I hurt myself, so I could (laughs) go to the hospital for an emergency (laughs) party. Hey, Bob, Bob, I've come for the emergency party. They frowned on it. I was poo pooed by the staff of the hospital and asked to go home. But still, I had a go. He says also we've planned a few years in advance too. On the 10th of the 10th of the 10th, we're having a binary party. 101010. Uh, that's more like it. Futuristic theme like where fun. everyone dresses as robots. On 11-11-11, uh, on we're having a prison party because the date looks like bars. All those ones. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <are you> noggins. <laughs> on the 12th of the 12th of the 12th, we're all going to be roadies or something. I don't understand why he would be. Anyway, thanks for that, Billy in Glasgow. Do you want another one? Yeah. Uh, okay, then here is another one. Uh, okay, this is a good one. James McAnally. When I was at university in Exeter, I was lucky enough to be friends with one particular group who threw the most incredible parties. Once we were all told to come dressed for the beach, we arrived to find a ton of sand covering their hall and kitchen floor. What? Deck chairs, spotlights, so you could lounge and enjoy the sunshine. And deck chairs. In another room, they'd attached a tarpaulin to the walls and created an indoor swimming pool. Shut your mouth. They had also built a water slide. The slide was covered <laughs> in plastic sheeting and attached to a powerful pump to get that genuine water flu and flow going. It. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. I, it was accessed via a stepladder and went from the first floor bedroom window <laughs> out into the garden before banking round and coming back into the house through some French windows and into the pool. It was huge. That is just not true. Well, what is not true about it? All of it. But it's fantasy. It's the kind of Adam, insane Adam, fantasy Adam. I used to have as a five-year-old. Students. They're students. students. Students do anything. Do they? They could do that. You could put a top all in up in a room. That's a good idea. Fasten it to the walls, turn yeah. on the taps, bish, bash, bosh, 24 hours later, big pull. Listen, every fibre of my being wants that to be true, but I just don't believe that it could be done. And imagine the cleaning up operation after that house would be totally yeah, trash, but wouldn't it? Student house. I'm too practical. That's my problem. You know what? I, I'm not sure I believe that either, James McAnally. Can, yeah. can that be true? He, uh, McAnally, listen, not McAnally. Surely McAnally. if they'd had a party like that, there would be photographic evidence. Send us wa- the photos, McNally. I want to see the proof. Otherwise, you will forever be branded a liar Cause I, by the castle. Yeah. And that would be frightful. One time we had a party when I was at art school in Cheltenham in our subterranean flat. And... Um, there, a, a food fight broke out. That, a food fight? Uh, 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 food fight. <laughs> That's an eighties way of saying that. Uh, 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 food fight. <laughs> so they said it in the eighties, <laughs> and there was a massive food fight. And so all these cakes and cream cakes and stuff that some of the girls from the fashion department had brought round all started getting thrown and stuff, and everyone was sliding around. I cranked up the music, and it was like a scene from some kind of crazy frat movie. The next day, the place. St- dank of puke and 
all the kind of off cream and stuff on the walls. We were scraping that stuff off the walls for stuff. weeks, scrubbing, scrubbing, scraping the it was, stuff. And we were all hung over. It was, oh, it, was, it was the worst day of my life. Sounds like a wicked party. <laughs> yeah. But thank you to everybody who contributed to Retro Text the Nation. Don't forget, when we announce this week's Text the Nation subject, you too can partake during the week, and your contribution might be read out next week on Retro Text the Nation. And if that makes sense, then good. Partake, partake, partake. Let's have a partake. That's the root of the word party. Yeah. But it's from the word partake. Partake. Yeah. yeah. Partay. Partake. <laughs> The, just the cuff fell off. Uh -huh. Here's uh, Depeche Mode. They're talking about fragile tension. Good. <laughs> That's Depeche Mode uh, with their new one, Fragile Tension. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. And don't forget, we've started at an earlier time of 10am today, listeners. If you're confused or something feels a bit off, that's why. But it does mean we're going through till one in the afternoon. Yay. We're pushing through the noon barrier. Is that going to change the tone of the last <clears throat> hour? Are you allowed to say pushing through the noon barrier? <laughs> <laughs> you're allowed to say, you're just not allowed to do it. <laughs> not allowed to think about it. <laughs> Listen, darling. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh. Did you just push through the noon barrier? You are disgusting. You disgust me. Uh, are you going to be eating your lunch in the studio later Don't on? Don't go from pushing through the noon barrier to eating <laughs> lunch. What kind of a segue <laughs> is that? I'm interested. Revolting. What's the question? <laughs> After you've pushed through the noon barrier. Oh, will, will I you, be having something to eat? Will you have your lunch? Uh, you brought in some lunch? No, I ain't brought in no lunch. I, I got some lunch. I, I, I got some lunch. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you should it's bring old in, man noises in again. future you should bring in tupperware and stuff have yourself a little packed lunch should i do you yeah. think get out some um bakewell tarts and a little bit of there's someone at my work place who comes into the office every day with a, tu a tupperware lunch mm -hmm. he's a very good chap location manager called josh he separates his citrus fruits into separate compartments within the tupperware box like it so it's a triple compartmented box it'll have grapes in one compartment mm -hmm. pineapple in another very nice. an orange in another Ooh. in the middle of a meeting he will quietly get this tupperware pot out yeah place it on the table open it and start picking with thumb and forefinger bits of fruit out of different compartments i yeah. get very jealous do you does he never offer you any... He, he always... He sees me looking and then he always offers the fruit, but I can't... I don't want to take his fruit. No, of course not. No. Have, has it occurred to you that maybe you could invest in some Tupperware and bring in your own Do you fruit? think it's important to separate the citrus yes! fruits? Yes! So they don't... Yes! Why? Because Otherwise or... you get a salad. <laughs> What's wrong with a fruit salad? Well, it's a different Why is he thing. so against a salad? Because he doesn't want a salad. Why does he want fruit separation in that way? He wants to enjoy He's the unique flavour of each of the fruits. It's an indication of how organised he is. by some other fruit. <laughs> he doesn't want fruit bleed. He's not, that's not what the scheme is. He wants an individual fruit experience. Clearly. But that, that's so... I can, you can, I can just see it in his eye. Yeah. I mean, it makes him a different kind of man, the I like fact it. that the fruit is compartmentalised, like don't him. you think? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I like him as well. I really like him. Drives like a maniac. Does he? He does, yeah. You are a bit of an old woman in a car, though, when other people are driving. Well, you get in Josh's car. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever driven with our friend Danny? <laughs> yeah, I have. He multitasks Drives well, like a driving. maniac. <laughs> he is <laughs> <frightening>. terrifying. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, this is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. It's time for a free play. This is a, a hip-hop band from the past. This is from an album called Bizarre Ride to the Far Side, released in 1992. This is The Far Side with Passing and Me By. Six Music. Later today, songs with with girls shouting with Jimmy Winkwong. Then at midnight, DJ Scratch Max. But now, oh, it's Adam and Joe. Honey. Lovely Sarah Cracknell there with St. Etienne. You're in a bad way. Uh, that was. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. We were talking about tummy rumbles and stomach noises either last week or the week before. And uh, we were complaining about the fact that we never have the presence of mind to record them. You know, obviously it's difficult to do so. What are you chuckling about? Just com that, that being something to complain about. Yeah. 
Oh, wow. why do I never have the presence of mind to record my dummy noises? That's the kind of thing I worry Ooh. about. <laughs> I lie awake at night thinking about that kind of stuff. <laughs> if only I could record my tummy rumbles, I'd be somebody. <laughs> I'd get somewhere. My life would come together instead of just being a little fat, hairy loser man. But here is a message right now from someone who is a success in their life and it's <laughs> nathan <laughs> he says hi adam and joseph about a year ago me and my friends put together a cd of found sounds and feel re field recordings called happened upon with a microphone mm. for about four days in a row my wife's stomach had been making these crazy noises every morning in bed when we woke up and i just had to record it for the cd also recorded is us laughing our heads off as we did on each of these mornings whilst mesmerized by the sounds it's very heartwarming and tender for me to listen back to it he says i hope you like it too. listen 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 i tried to listen to these yeah. last night i didn't get more than three or four seconds into it before i had to switch he it off he sent us a very long section of rumbling that sounded almost like digital interference uh but or, it's a very intimate noise it really is i mean it sounds like it was a, too intimate for me sure he's obviously got the mic right there on his wife's belly it's almost like uh an ultrasound i mean it's well through the noon barrier and out the other <laughs> side <laughs> have a listen though i think it is heartwarming i've clipped it so it's just a little bit of this uh he says p.s there's no copyright or anything on this it's free to but use wait, wait. anywhere you know listeners are already revolted by boggins come on this is not a revolt just give it a listen go on and don't take your headphones off <laughs> oh, that's sweet with the with the with the lady voice. Yeah. It. yeah, I didn't hear that loud. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> that's Thank good. You. They're quite modest, aren't they? Yeah. Thank quite you, Nathan modest. and uh, Angela. That was Angela's stomach there. That must Angela's be nice stomach. to have your stomach on the radio. Do you know what I think? I mean, there's been changes at Six Music recently. New mm. presenters. What about having Angela's stomach do a show? Yes, after George, or before George before Lamb, or after, George Lamb, or during George maybe Lamb, maybe over some of George Lamb. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's get Angela's stomach in. Come on, Angela's stomach. That's it for you, sir. Angela's but, stomach jingle, uh, bing bong. Give us a bing bong for Angela's stomach. Come on. <laughs> and then a record. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice what kind of she could play records like uh, obscure electronica and stuff on the warp label and mm. things that squelchy Bleeps and boops exactly you wouldn't yeah. be able to tell that's a good idea we should really be running this station Shouldn't into we? the ground exactly hey thank you so much nathan oh, and angela what is it incidentally from a medical point of view that causes those sounds food it's, it's food but gases and and things pipping and popping inside your intestines from a medical point of view that is exactly <laughs> what's causing it dr buckles yeah the pipping and popping yeah 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 of the squirtles yeah well done you remembered all your medical training squirtles all your terminology thank you <laughs> thanks to nathan and angela once again hey it's nearly christmas time i don't know if you knew folks but it's coming up around the corner it's a time of year where there's a great deal of uh, peace and happiness and goodwill to all men if you're involved with a war you have to put your guns down and play football if you're uh, a nasty person you have to learn some kind of lesson and change your ways and you have to give everybody exactly what they want present wise especially children who've been watching commercials all year and you know have a long list of things they want you have to give it all them otherwise you're going to be in trouble and julian casablancas from the strokes has celebrated all this by um issuing this single which is called i wish it was christmas today i mean he seems upbeat about christmas but i just don't believe that julian casablancas would generally he's genuinely... very cynical and cool isn't exactly. he isn't he's... he's not going to want like manufactured celebrations no he's probably going to do something his christmas tree's probably upside down and in the loo <laughs> 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 you know he would sit there with his uh tatty sneakers on mm. santa's face yes is what he'd do yeah because he's got no cigarette ash into his beard exactly yeah oh uh, you got me a carton of cigarettes they're great that's what i wanted i'm gonna smoke them in your face happy christmas you disgusting you suck it's disgusting that's the kind of christmas he's gonna be having uh, well, is he saying you suck is he is is he saying to santa you Santa is a suck. Exactly. He's yeah, using it as, as a, opposed to as a suck, noun. You suck. Yeah, he's using yeah. it as a noun. That's how little he cares and mm. how little respect he has he for Santa. He shouldn't be played on the radio, really, should he? Because he's really subversive and 
uh, lazy and rude yeah. and casual. All that whole thing is just totally ironical. I wish it was Christmas Day. It's Not. Ridiculous. You suck. I'm going to smoke in your face. That's what he's got. He shouldn't be allowed anywhere. Can you smell near my Christmas. sneakers? Can you smell my tatty sneakers? Good. Because they're tatty and I've been wandering around with them for weeks and I can't be bothered to change them. I'm not even wearing underwear. He's wicked. You know? And look, my shirt is untucked. What are you going to do about it, you old man? My hair is dirty. I like it. I've got spots and pimples. Deal with it. I'm going to smoke another cigarette in your face. Well, I'm glad he's not coming around to my house for Christmas. <laughs> That's uh, par for the course at the Buckles house. Is it? Yeah, my Casablanca son's... coming around. Casablanca. Everyone behaves like that at the Buckles house. I call him Casablanca. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got a free play for you right now, ladies and gentlemen. This is a chanteuse. Do you like the chanteuse? J'aime le chanteuse. You know, I, I feel as if I don't play enough music by talented women on this show. Because mm. uh, I tend to end up with indie pop by white males. That's just where I gravitate. So I'm trying to I'm trying to spread my legs <laughs> and play uh, a track by a lady called Mara Carlyle. She's she's like a little kind of chanteuse pixie, and she plays the ukulele. So right, it's a bewitching. It's all sounding terribly promising. Well, it's a bewitching. You're going to open your legs and attempt to play a song by a tiny pixie. Yeah, with a ukulele. With a ukulele. Uh huh. You ready? Yeah. I mean, this is going to be a sexy few minutes and smoother than this program might normally be mm. you know what i'm saying so imagine you're in a dimly lit lounge with, mm. a, with some kind of a cocktail a fruity cocktail mm. and uh you spread your legs and you've got your ukulele <laughs> tim allen's in the room and uh here's mara carlisle this is called away with these self-loving lads justice versus simeon with we are your friends I was in the supermarket earlier this week, Joe, mm. and um, doing a little bit of shopping. And I decided in a sudden whirlwind of craziness to nip next door and go to the electronics shop and buy myself a Blu-ray player. You fool. Because I want to get with the Blu-ray, right? Because DVDs, they're going to be extinct in when? When, when do you think they're going to stop making the DVD players there? Next week? Yeah, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you know, those things are almost totally extinct. The mm. nice thing about the Blu-ray player is that you'll be able to play your DVDs on them, right? Correct. And uh, it'll scale it up to... Upscaling, uh, faux, correct. ...faux uh, HD or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So it's win-win with the Blu-ray. Uh, yeah, there's no downside to it, is there? There is, yeah. It's region-locked. Region-locked? Yeah. So if you were a movie buff... Uh, of worth your salt you would have had a multi-region dvd player and you could have had fun importing yeah dvds from all over the world broadened your cinematic horizons uh the people at sony who invented blu-ray decided to put a stop to that oh not again they do this every single Mate, time but luckily you can get uh, machines hacked yeah of course it's this it was the same with dvd yeah. players when but they they're came much out. slower they're much they've kind of figured it out so it's harder to hack but i've got one Gene Hackman. Did I've he sort it out Gene for Hackman, you? yeah. Well done. Went round to the hackles. Yeah. And now it's brill skills. You can go anywhere in the world and buy the high-def fun. I forgot about the whole region. So just thing. come to Uncle Jojo. Have you... You've already bought the thing. Already bought it. Mm. Wanted to tell you about my experience of buying it. Okay, let's hear it. Because I haven't been and bought... Like, a, I haven't spent a lot of money on a bit of hardware for a while. And I went in there to the shop. And usually I know if I'm going to buy some was hardware... Was this a chain store or is this was an independent electronics retailer? No, this was a chain store. Right. So I go in there. There's a little chap with a trendy haircut... Um, and he's a skinny little fella, and he's slightly spotty, mm. but he's sparkly. He's on his game. Yes, he certainly is. He's a salesman. He's a salesman. He gets a percentage. Right. You know, he's got to get his targets. He wasn't clueless. He wasn't one of those guys you go into the shop and go, oh, right. yeah, you could get that one. I don't it well. I like that guy. Yeah, I think that's a good one. Yeah. Do you, have you got a plug? Well, that would be a good one. It wasn't like that. No. He was m most sparky and he was like, he was a good salesman. He has a little white shirt on there, his mm, pen's mm, in the mm, pocket mm. there. Mm. So there's a little earring in there and he's going to sell me whatever he wants to sell me. Yeah, after a Blu ray play. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, come over here, have a look at this one. This is a really good one. Top of the line. If I was going to buy this, this is the one I'd buy. So I, immediately I'm thinking, I want to buy it. That's the one I want to buy. If it's top of the line, if it's, if it's the one that he would want to buy, I'm going to buy it. Mm. So it's like, mm. yeah, okay, I'm interested in that one. And um, so, bang, I'm in there already. So he goes, okay. And he's th obviously thinking to himself, 
cool, I've got what they call a lay down here. I think in uh, salesman speak, a lay down is someone who's just going to come in and do whatever you How want. How do you know do. that? Have you been watching Glen Gary, Glen Ross? No, I've been reading Malcolm Gladwell books. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> what is it with you and Malcolm Gladwell? He's brills. Anyway, he talks about lay downs, and salesmen know that when they've got a sucker coming in, it's party time. So I think he saw buckles coming. But so far, he hasn't pulled any wool over your eyes. He's no. selling you a perfectly reasonable... It's a good machine. I've got free sat on there and everything. I'm excited about the free sat. And uh, so... And then hard disk recorder? Hard disk recorder, yeah. Right. I know the very model. Uh, the whole nine yards. I'm really excited about it. I'm, I'm really excited about recording things in HD. Can't wait. Yeah. So then after that's all done and dusted, then he starts going on about all the other things that I could be buying. And it, the first one of which is the HDMI cable. Yes, you need one of those. They're expensive. They are expensive, Well, yo. you should get one with the machine, actually. It should be supplied with the machine. Didn't get one with the machine. Mm. should have got one with the so machine. So you're going to need an HDMI cable. Right, sir, come over here. Have a look at these HDMI cables. You three basic cables that we sell. We've got uh, the good one, the better one, and the very good one. Mm. So uh, it, 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 most people will go for the very good one, of course. So the, the good one starts at £50. Pounds. £50! Pounds! for the cable mm -hmm. the, the very good one 75 quid the really good one that everyone should get a hundred pounds he said that's like already a hundred quid extra Clever on the stuff, thing that i bought it? and i'm thinking and he's going the very good one has a gold wire running down the middle yes. which conducts the picture and transfers golden the pic picture the golden picture the very good one has a, a bronze wire i think it was mm. the the good one doesn't have a wire there's no wire it's just hollow the picture just trickles through and you know it's buy that probably one. buy that one no buy the bad one i wouldn't want to buy the bad compromise one. buy the middling of, one what kind of jerk of course i should have bought the middling one because can you imagine the, the difference good one. in picture? Buy the good one buy the good i bought one. the good one of course you bought the good i wanted one. Him to i wanted to show him that i was the kind of guy who would yes. buy a really good hdmi you wanted cable. to impress him so after that he's chuckling to himself thinking it's mr lay down i'm gonna sell him some stuff that he really doesn't need because he's a jerk and i can sell him things because he's a moron so he goes okay surge protection <laughs> <laughs> so he comes out there's a whole section with surge protectors do you know what a surge protector is y yeah it looks like a big uh plug gang Don't you know what i'm it. saying like an adapter thing they're all different colors they've got switches all over them they've got little bnc Don't need it. cables Don't need it. Don't need it. You oh, didn't buy it, did not according to this guy <laughs> now and, and so i said to him at this point i'm chuckling and i'm like saying surge protectors yeah yeah yeah. they're all about 150 quid he's saying yeah you really need a surge protector I was like, do I? He said, yeah, especially around this part of the world, East Anglia, a lot of lightning storms. Mm. You get a, a, a lightning, hits the house, comes down, surge, blow up everything. Every bit of electrical equipment you've got. Blow up your modem, blow up your computer. Blow, you know, if you've got them, uh, if you've got an Xbox, that kind of thing. All Terrifying plugged in, scenario. They're all going to blow up. And that'll be this it. This is fear-mongering. And I said, really? At this point, I think, I'm not going to lay down for the, for the surge protector. So I said, I, I, I just said to him directly, Really? Do you actually know anyone who has needed a surge protector or they've had nice. their equipment blown up by... Tables turned. And at that point, he looked rattled. For the first time, <sighs> there was a twitch in his face and he, he looked down, right? And uh, he did the tell of looking down and... Uh, and he said, yeah. The tell? Yeah. He said... You've been watching The Real Hustle. I watch all the stuff. I know all the lingo. <laughs> he said, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it happened to a mate of mine. A uh, house was hit by lightning. Lost all well, his Well, he stuff. looked down because his friend was probably killed. <laughs> and you've been very insensitive. Right. And if the friend had had a surge protector, right. he wouldn't have been killed by surge. In fact... Now surge has come into his house and beaten him to death and then <laughs> sung something in French meddled with his daughter and left yeah in fact his gravestone is probably sh shaped like a huge <laughs> surge protector and i'm poo-pooing the protection that he's offering me but um i didn't go for the surge protector i felt that was that was one step too far mm. but i'd like to hear from many listeners you're living on a knife edge well exactly your your house is on fire probably as we speak i've got a family am i being totally irresponsible i can't believe it I want to hear from any listeners who know if I've made a terrible mistake. Surge protector. Uh, so there you go. Watch out for the surges. Here's Joy Division with Shadow Play. Robin Falsworth says, HDMI cables, eight quid from Tesco. <laughs>
Uh, Jeff in Sheffield says most Blu-rays are region free. Well, I can test that, Jeff. For instance, the Criterion uh, Blu-ray American editions aren't region free. They're region locked. If you want to be confident that you can buy any Blu-ray anywhere in the world, you need a multi-region. Uh, Jeff versus Joe. Jeff versus uh, Joe. Joe's won. I mean, Jeff hasn't got a leg to stand on. Jeff versus Joe. I've spent about fifty million pounds on Blu-rays in the last year. Sam Innocent says, at the risk of sounding like a nerd, as a digital signal is digital, not analog, isn't it just ones and zeros? Either it works or it doesn't. The expensive HDMI cables are a total con. You see, I don't know. I don't I'm know. I'm not sure that's true because there's compression rates, right? Yeah. I read Home Cinema Choice magazine. Right. Maybe there'll be something in the news about this. It's just gone eleven thirty. It is the news. Very nice. Badly drawn mm. boy there with you. Are right. What? I was going to do the announcing of the song for oh, sorry, you because you looked a little confused with your paperwork. I was just checking my paperwork. It seems to be in order. Uh, that was from Badly Drawn Boy's 2002 album, Have You Fed the Fish? Did you ever have fish? Uh, You're more of a cat man. Have fish? I did have fish briefly. They have a habit of dying. They do. They love They to do. Die. And then the worst thing is when one dies, its body decomposes, the other one sort of breathes its decomposed body in and then it dies too it's a hellish life really though isn't it <laughs> to be a fish why would you want to be a fish well in a tank i think in the real world it would be super fun you got your five minute memory have there you not and... seen finding nemo i have that's what it is great socially it's great there's a great social scene they have schools of course but they only have the one character there dory who has the limited memory limited memory but she's brills i think most fish are limited in the memory department well i wouldn't make a blanket generalization like that otherwise you might uh incur the wrath of the geniuses fish groups exactly fish protest schools groups. <laughs> <laughs> Boo! yes bash wonky so listeners now it's time for text the nation is it let's try it let's have a jingle text the nation text 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 the nation what if i don't want to text the nation but i'm using email is that a problem it doesn't matter text text the nation this week listeners this is what joe usually says it's all about things that you have been getting wrong for years and only just realized Here's a couple of uh, brief examples, right? We're going to keep this set up very short because we want to hear your ideas for Text the Nation. For example, I only just realised this week <laughs> that I've been misspelling realise for a very long time. And it's confusing for me because um, my well, computer... Is it an S or a Z thing? S or a Z. Well, that's true. The computers try and make... Microsoft Word tries and makes yeah. tries to make you put a Z in. Tries to make you put a Z in. all of those words. And you've got the keyboard set to UK spelling. Rationalise. Right? It's always Z, isn't it? Yeah, it wants to stick the Z in there. Yeah. Why is that? Mm, it's a I disgrace. So it totally polluted my mind for years. Mm. Pretty much ever since I started using a PC, you know, started thinking, oh dear, I thought it was an S and apparently it is a Z because there is a red underline. I must correct it. So now I'm Johnny American spelling of uh, realize and loads of other things with a S sound that uh, with a Z sound that should be an S. I spoke to my wife the other day and I said, like, is it S or a Z with realize? She said, yeah, S, obviously. And then I went through a whole load of other words. She said, yeah, S, S, S. <laughs> I've been getting Zs everywhere. Just random Z guy. The other thing was, and this is quite embarrassing, thank you, I always thought was one word. Well, yeah, that, I think that's a movable feast. You reckon? I, I mean, officially it's two, isn't it? Not according to the people I've spoken to. They yeah. said that's not a movable feast. It's two words, you dork, is what Who I got. You been to? Who said that to you? Wife. Why? <laughs> <laughs> she laughed. She laughed at me for a while. Thank you. I That's one word. Thank, Thank you. you. That's what I think, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. That's two words. Thank you. That's two words. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks is obviously one word. Thank you. That's one word. To me, that sounds like one word. But no, it's two. Not even hyphenated. Like I was thinking maybe it was hyphenated. No. It's two words. So that's quite ignorant, isn't it, listeners? But I've been getting that wrong for a very, very long time. And I'd be curious to know if I'm the only moron involved with this program. I want to hear from you out there about things. And it doesn't have to be like grammatical errors and spelling errors. I'd like to hear about just any kind of misconception you've had in your life that has only recently been corrected, OK? That is Textonation this week. And I would like to announce that as the fastest Textonation setup ever in the history of this program. Do wow. You, do you think that is? That's exciting. It's a record breaker! Where's Norris McWhorter when you need him? I'm afraid he passed away. Here's oh. Doves with House of Mirrors. Doves, Doves. 
Los Dovios, Dovilos. That's House of Mirrors. I forgot to say, of course, I was so excited about the short text the nation set up. I didn't actually give out the email address or the text number for your submissions. 64046 is the text number. The email address is adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk. If you're listening throughout the week on Listen Again or whatever, then emails only, please, if you're responding for Retro Text the Nation about things that you have uh, got wrong all your life and only recently found out about. Shablamadi, shablamada. Shablamidi, shablamida, shablamidi, shablamida. Do you know what that is? Sure, I do. What is it? That is Brian Eno, one of Brian Eno's favourite songs. Uh, he loves the production on a little bit of Donna Summer, right? Right, exactly. State of Independence. Yeah, here's a free play. This is Donna Summer with State of Independence. I love this. The Caveman. That's Nick Cave with Bring It On. Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. So the salesman I was talking about in the electrical shop that sold me my Blu-ray player was actually listening to the programme. Well, one of his friends. One of his friends. One of his co-workers. It didn't occur to me that they might know who on earth I was. But um, he objected to being called Spotty, the salesman. Actually, he wasn't Spotty, now I come to think of it. It was a lazy kind of bit of characterization there that I did. He was a very good-looking man. And one thing I omitted to mention was that I fell in love with him. <laughs> well, now you're just going too far the Am other I? way. Yeah. And we're living together. Is that too much? Yeah, it is. Mm. You know, you should go for the medium price cable rather than the very expensive <laughs> one or the very cheap one. <laughs> Do you know what I'm trying to say? Well, I hope it came across that the service I received at the shop was absolutely exemplary. We've had some terrific responses to, the, to Text the Nation. This is going to be a good one, I feel. Oh, yeah. Do I've you printed some out, and so they're going to be coming up in a second. But first of all, let's talk about something that might... Um, anger some people it's a divisive <laughs> subject there's this dog that uh, hangs around the bbc and comes into our studio you might have heard him in previous programs and his very presence really annoys a lot of listeners in a very fundamental way other listeners get annoyed that those listeners are annoyed he's a very licky dog and mm. that's the thing he comes very up physical. to the microphone and he pants and he licks and yeah. to hear that kind of licking in your ear hole sometimes is unwhelcome for a lot smelly of smelly dog as well also very old stinks because but terribly old and sweet he has a anal gland braced problem Anne. which an an anal gland yeah. based problem which causes him to drag his uh, bottom across the carpet but sometimes. he's and and he will eat other dogs feces but apart from that he's really he's really sweet. sweet he's very sweet and um, but he hasn't been around for a while but his name is boggins he did come into the program and he's caused frightful controversy and uh half of our listeners um and we get almost as much mail about boggins as we do about anything mm. else on this program and half the mail it's divided pretty much equally between people that want to see the dog killed mm. not humanely but brutally mm. and uh the other half of the listeners who think he's sweet and the dog's fictional we should have he's a fictional dog he's not exist. a real dog right mm. but still it's very doesn't, sweet it doesn't bother our listeners because he is an absolutely sweet chap but then some listeners have stopped listening to the program because they think enough is enough and they don't want to listen to a show with like a fictional dog that licks your ear hole uh, who stinks, even if he's sweet. A listener called Ollie Moss has created two posters. They're beautifully designed, very simple, very striking. One simply declares, save Boggins, with two red crossed bones, a little like the Red Cross. Yeah. And the other says, and that's red on white, the other is white on red, and it says, kill Boggins, with the same cross design, but at an angle, so it becomes an X, a... Uh, it is an absolutely brilliant piece of design from very Edward simple, very James beautiful. Olimos. And if you visit our blog, uh, which can be found at the internet address that I am about to read you... It is bbc.co.uk slash blogs slash Adam and Joe. You don't say forward slash anymore, right? Nah, just a slash. It's redundant, it's just a slash. Have a slash. Have a little slash. Uh, then you can, if you go to that address, you can download both of those posters. And if it's your one, Bosters. you can... Um, Declare your affection or fury towards Boggins in, in your home your or workplace. You can I mean, I don't know. I don't know who would want to do that. David Bowie. David. <laughs> David. He's printing out both the posters. I printed out both the decisions. posters. I hung them in my window. I couldn't decide if I wanted to kill him or let it slide. What do you think? Uh, what wizard? do you think David's stance on Boggins would be? Bowie's Boggins stance. Is he not uh, David Boggins? <laughs> <laughs> is he not very empathetic and pro animals well, yeah but what about fiction animals that stink and have anal uh, problems very sweet yeah i think he would like it i don't know i you think know, he'd be divided 
I think and the- he'd do a concept album. Right. One side pro boggins, the other side anti boggins. Yes. Imagine, and there'd be a website and a video game and probably a film made by his son, Diamond Stinky Dogs. It would be brill skills. It would be I mean, that's amazing. certainly the way for him to go, isn't it? I mean, I, I'm pretty certain. He could do a little spoken intro. Yes. Like uh, Future Legend at the beginning yes. of Diamond Dogs. Yes. And in the death, as the last few corpses lay <laughs> rotting in Temperance Alley, in crawled a small stinky man who had a problem with his anal glands. <laughs> he was dragging his bottom that across be triumphant. the floor. I mean, that's a, that's a wide open door for Bowie to return to the centre of the contemporary zeitgeist. <laughs> All he needs to do is step through it. I mean, return. Well, he's obviously he's a, never a left. deity. He's an extraordinary presence, but he could be at the top of all the charts. Yeah. They, they, if he's lucky, they might even have him as a guest on X Factor. Get on the blog, yo. Check it all out. Hang these posters in your window. We can really start something here, folks. Also, you might be able to find some of the songs that people have been sending in to some of our ludicrous uh, improvised singing every now and again. Have we got one there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the piece of paper over there. Adam's put I've his... Uh, yeah. I've got it. Here it is. Hey, Joe, man, we've broken through the noon barrier. <sighs> was there a little pop when we pushed through the barrier? I there? think there was. There yeah. was definitely, yeah, a sound. It's so weird. Uh, here's a message right now from Wesley, and he says, Here's my remix of Adam's brilliant radio song. I would say that is uh, stressing it too strongly. I liked his song more than Joe's, although Joe's was lyrically miles better. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't agree with you there, Wesley. <laughs> what are we still, talking about? What songs? Uh, the songs... The, 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 <laughs> the random blurbles. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's dignifying to call them songs. He's from South Africa, and he sends his love. He's our very biggest South African fan. Here's what he came up with. (laughs) Remember, shush, sorry. Sexy. Let's go. To the song on the radio. Oh, squelchy. Mm, that, I mean, that's that, sexy. There's, se- there's something sexy about that. If I was say. a gangster, I would dance to that in yeah, a nightclub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing about provide. Well, what we've done is we've provided those so-called vocals in a nude version for you that you can download on our blog. Yeah. And then you can use your production skills, and they really do throw into sharp contrast uh, people's skills in making something sound really cool even if it actually sounds awful the variety of approaches is delicious he says uh wesley p.s i started out liking boggins now it's all just getting too much kill him so and there's a little smiley emoticon underneath there well you can get on the blog and print out your kill boggins poster and hang it in south africa there although maybe i don't know but if you want to have a go at, (laughs) at, at demonstrating your production skills with some really hopeless um you know some singing that's totally devoid of any value yeah i would say then then download those valueless bits of singing and and show us your chops show us what you've got see if you can take them in a different direction whoa whoa you, you're asking to see the listeners chops. i want to see everyone's chops <laughs> Pop your chops on the table look at that look at her chops here's faithless this is mass destruction yep 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 that was faithless with mass destruction from 2004 he's a skinny man that guy is his name maxi jazz the the rapping man there here's a picture of him here opposite sister bliss And she's fully clothed, but Maxi Jazz appears to be fully naked. And he is like a little kind of skeletal-looking chap. He looks like the guy in The Wire, if you're a Wire fan. Cedric, he looks like. It might be an old photo. You never know. Recently, he might have ballooned. Absolute tubulatron. You've ballooned. Look at you. You've ballooned. You've absolutely ballooned. Balloon. Um, So, we're going to do some text the nation here, right? Sure we are. Should we have the jingle? Hit it. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. What's it all about then, Adam? What's it all about? It's about misconceptions. Things you've got wrong for most of your life and only recently discovered uh, that you had been doing that so wrong. Yes, case in point. Poppy and Muswell Hill. Hi, Adam and Joe. For many years I thought that the expression prima donna was actually pre madonna using madonna's (laughs) chart success as a benchmark to compare all other female singers to i recently had this pointed out by my dad felt a little bit silly poppy in muswell hill muswell 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 that's yeah that's one i do you see yeah i told you i've got loads of them but you'll seem like affectations that you're quite proud of like saying kate beckinsdale that's just my approach to life in general (laughs) kate beckinsdale try and be happy with one's flaws quite right 
This one's from Joe in Bow. It wasn't until recently I realised that a piece of cake was called a sliver and not a slither. Ah, Apparently yes. everyone else knows it apart from me. A sliver, not a slither. Slither is something a snake would do. Yes, exactly. It is confusing, though. I remember when that Sharon Stone film came out. It took me a while to get my brain in gear for that. Slither. The Sharon Stone film Slither. I was excited about the prospect of Stone Slither. slithering. I wanted to see some, because you can imagine, a she'll do anything. Slithering. <laughs> and that was around the time in her career where she was slithering all over the place. Mm-hmm. And when it turned out to be uh, just she lived in a, a thin building, was it? <laughs> I don't think I ever saw it. <laughs> what a terrible Is that the one job. where the catchphrase was, I like to watch? That's right, yeah. Who was it? Was it one of the Baldwins it, sitting in front of a big bank of tellies? That's right, yeah. He just wired up the whole place with CCTV. Waxing on and waxing off. So, <laughs> so he could watch uh, Sharon taking showers Sharon and stuff. Sharon and off. Uh, here's one from Dilly in Plymouth. I used to think on Halloween that when you knocked at people's door, you'd say, trickle treats. Trickle treats. <laughs> Instead of trickle treat. When they answered. <laughs> this made perfect sense, as I'd only get a handful of sweets from each person. She spells sweets sweats. <laughs> I just, so her problems aren't over. <laughs> I'd only get a handful of sweats from each person that answered, Dilly and A Plymouth. little trickle of sweat. Yeah. Trickle treat. <laughs> Do a little just, wee in the garden. Guy just pushes his armpit up to the uh, <laughs> mailbox there and sort of scrapes a little bit of pers- perspiration off into her bag. Francis in Brighton has a problem. I thought till very recently that the word chimney was chimney. Chimney? And was always very confused in the Mary Poppins song. Now, instead of saying word, she says work. I thought till very recently that the work chimney was chimney. So there's a multiplicity of uh, problems there in Francis's brain. Chim chimley, chim chimley, chim chim (laughs) chimley. Clean the chimley. These are all quite sweet, though. They are. Tim and Dorset, Adam and Joe. I've worked in a cafe on my summer holidays from uni. And since I graduated, come along, here we go, I'll try this again. I've worked in a cafe on my summer holidays from uni and since I graduated, so about a year overall. There's an emerging theme with these, isn't there? I mean, not only is there the problem, <laughs> but there are often other problems it's not, around it's the not problem. It's not an isolated It's a fault. grouping of incidents. <laughs> <laughs> it's problem spotting. I only just realised it's an espresso, not an expresso. Ah, well, you see, that is a bone of contention. Is it? Is that debatable? I myself have used espresso uh, in a formal context. Espresso. Some people say you can spell it with an X. Other people say you have to... Well, the same can be said of realise and using Zs. I don't know if it's the same sort of thing. I don't know if it's the, an American, a UK, a US... Well, divide. sometimes there's no hard and fast rule. <laughs> Language is, uh, is a very evolution. You know, it changes a lot. Does it? Yeah. 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 Uh, Dave in Crofton Park. Apparently it's chutney, not chutney. <laughs> <laughs> Says chutney. Dave. Llama. Oh, we know Llama. She's an old friend of the show. Mm-hmm. I've been saying it scalectrics ah, for about 15 one. years. I only recently found out that it's scalectric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first one's so much easier to say. Scalectric just gets stuck in your mouth. I can't be alone on this one. Absolutely not. I, I had the same problem. I was setting up the track only last Ooh. week, and I wrote about it in my diary, and I had to go and spell check it on the internet because it started scrambling my brain. And the you internal... spell, you spell checked it f- before you wrote it in your diary. Yeah, because you're worried about spelling mistakes in your diary. Don't want a badly spelled diary for when the publishers exactly come a knock in. Come a knock in, and it gets published. This and guy it's... can't spell scale extra. Yeah. We're not going to publish his diary. But s- spelling mistakes like that will be very uh, endearing in your published diary. No, I want people to be overwhelmed by my spelling prowess. Okay. Here's a final one for this segment from Nicola. Hi, Adam and Joe. My boyfriend recently asked me how many cloves of garlic i wanted chopping for a recipe we were making how can you have got through that many years <laughs> thinking it's cloves. i wasn't sure i'd heard correctly but he had indeed said <laughs> cloves and wasn't impressed when i burst out laughing at him <laughs> these are good, good keep one. them coming in what's the text number adam 64046 what is the email adam and joe dot six music at bbc.co.uk spank you thank you very much um, here is the School of Seven Bells with Half Asleep. This is the alternative version. Nice long ambient exit there. <clears throat> Excuse me, just clearing my throat. 
Adam and Joe here. We've bust through the noon barrier. It's uh, twenty past, coming up to twenty past twelve. A little time check there for you. We don't usually do that on this show, but uh, we do today. Okay, we started an hour later. Everything's totally different. Different kind of show. Topical show. News show. We're going to talk about the things that matter. <laughs> no, we're not. Um, later on today listeners i'm going i was to listening be- to you there without oh. my headphones on oh yeah it just felt like it just felt for a moment as you were a random nutter talking <laughs> rubbish in the corner of the room yeah Which, yeah so what's new that's yeah. my point charge. um later on today at five o'clock i'm going to be interviewing <gasps> spike jones la la. the film director not the creator of enjoyable he must be very nervous right music. now I imagine he's very nervous. He's, he's been very preparing tense, the big buckles interview for this for a long time. It's the big interview. The of his big career. interview. The big overview, mm. and uh, it's going to be taking place. At it's the- quite a peak for a performer, isn't it? When they are when you get the call, buckles. Yeah, for Count Buckley's call of the buckles. Um, it's taking place at the Apple Store in Regent Street, mm, the and number one venue. Exactly. Five o'clock. I'm going to be there talking to Spickle Spockles. That's what I call him. Uh, that's what I'm going to be calling him when I when I uh, see him there. Um, Spiker I might call him. Mm-hmm. Spockules, Doctor Spock, uh, the Jones, the Jones man, the Jonesinator. Anything else I should call him? Mm, no, I think he'll like all those names. He will. He's a he's a very um, convivial chap. I'm going to be talking to him obviously about his film Where the Wild Things Are, and uh, saw that last night. Enjoyed it greatly. Mm. It's not going to be a completely formal interview. In fact, it Why might not? be a little bit stupid. What? <laughs> He's doing an interview at the BFI, doing a Q&A uh, after a screening of his film. You were going to do that, though, weren't you? I was, but they got some slightly more heavyweight. Who have they got to do it? <laughs> I don't know, a journalist of some kind. A journalist? Um, so there's going to be a more in-depth Q&A with Spike at the BFI afterwards. Yours is uh, a shallower one. Mine is much more shallow. Scraping yeah. the surface. He doesn't know this yet, but I'm going to be... Um, <laughs> giving him i'm going to be quoting some <laughs> comments that i've got well, from your YouTube. first question should maybe just be who are you yeah what do you do right who are you and what do you do who are you and what do you do what then <laughs> well it depends what he says <laughs> who, oh what, what you i have to listen to what is answer yeah and then respond to that yeah what are your favorites, favorites. And don't specify what wait, 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 because wait. what are your favorites yeah and what are your worst what worst what can i just say that what worst well you can just say faves faves <laughs> Sp- spickles faves <laughs> then he comes back gives me an answer <laughs> then you go what are your worst what worst what's what's your worst worst is say worst okay you answered that now spocky jedward Spock. jedward what are your worst jedward that's the next one yeah right oh, oh 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 jedward jedward <laughs> <laughs> this is good this is good um and you don't think I should talk about the film? What? F- well, t- what film? The Wild Things. Oh, that's what he's done. Um, I wouldn't. Everyone, what about else, everyone about else will be talking about to him this? about that. He, what would Jedward make of the Wild Things? Or if they were Wild Things, what Wild Things would they would Jedward be? That's Jedward a good be. question. That's a good question. This is all going to be happening at five o'clock at the Apple Store in Regent Street. You can check their website for details. And it would be very nice to see you there. Not only Black Squadron, but mm. uh, Lazy Squadron as well. Afternoon Squadron. Who are you? Who what are do you, you? do? What? Faves? Faves? Worsties. Worsties. <laughs> Jedward? Bye. Who are you? <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> Who are you? What do you do? <laughs> worsties. <laughs> Question mark. Uh, worsties. So five questions. That should do it, shouldn't it? What about this one? Who do you do? Who do you do? Who do you do? Who? <laughs> Who currently do you do? Who do you do? Who do you do? Worsties? That's a good interview. That's a good interview. That's exciting. And I that's mean, free entry. Anyone free who's, entry. In, who's in London's Oxford Street can just stroll along. Any nutcase can stroll in off the street. <sighs> it's going to be a hot, hot uh, event, isn't sure it? Sure it is. Sure it is. I wonder if I can get Spickles to do anything for this show. Like, uh, I'm sure you could get Spickles to do something for this show. Yeah. I'm sure you could ask his opinion on Boggins. Right. Don't contextualise it. Just say, Boggins? <laughs> <laughs> 
You know, he said, well, that, that ties into the wild. Literally, well. just say Boggins. Boggins, Jedward. I mean, that before or after Jedward? Uh, mm, before. I'd say it takes priority culturally. Uh-huh. I would have thought he would have heard about Boggins. If he hasn't, then he might as well take off his pop culture king crown. Sure. Crown of the king. Karen O. His, she would have been talking king. all about Boggins. Crown. She's going to do a whole Boggins album, Karen mm. probably. Some pots and pans, a couple of wooden spoons. <laughs> <that are> shouting. <laughs> Sorted. Here's a free play for you now, listeners. Now, Joe, do you remember going to uh, Guy Gadney's party on the coach that he laid on years back? And mm, uh, I do, yeah. It was amazing. It was he- a school party, and he hired a coach, took us all from London to his parents' house. Yeah. And, and we got drunk and smashed it up. <laughs> got back on the coach and went home. That's not true. We well, behaved very well. true, isn't it? But we had a couple of lagers on the bus, I think, mm. going up there, because we were excited. And we had the stereo on. And do you remember we were playing um, this song, this Brian Ferry song, These Foolish Things, and we were acting it all out with... Uh, we were sort of miming along to You've all the lyrics on here. memory. It was fun, man. It was one of my fun childhood memories, and uh, this brings it all back. Brian Ferry doing These Foolish Things. <laughs> It's Brian Ferry with his wavy voice like the Vandra Bernhardt. That was These Foolish Things. Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. We're here with you until one o'clock today, of course, listeners, because we started an hour later. After us will be Liz Kershaw in her uh, usual slot. No, it's not. I mean, it's an hour later, so it's an unusual slot. But the, the slot will still be there. <laughs> You're fired. Thank you very much. I'll get my coach. And then later on in the afternoon, at three o'clock, Richard Bacon will be joining the Six Music family. We might even get Richard Bacon in later on. And my idea was to sit him between myself and Joe, ask him quickfire questions, and then it would be a grilled bacon sandwich. And I don't think that's ever been done before, but Joe disagrees strongly. Anyway, it's time for the news now. It's the Kaiser Chiefs with Every Day I Love You Less and Less. Have you heard of the Kaiser Chiefs, Richard Bacon? Uh, no, I'm not familiar with them. I really need to uh, get up to speed with music. If They're pres- a new band. They're a yeah. German skinny band. Skinny trousers. They're mili- a, mili- a German military band. Right. They're, they're real Kaiser Chiefs. Are they? Yeah. 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 Are yeah. they? They've commanded campaigns. Oh, and you should badly. really get to know about them now that you're starting your show here on Six Music because uh, the kids love them and the kids listen to this show and if if you don't say the right things to the kids, you'll be you know, you'll be kicked out. Well, I, I'm concerned, and this is this is BBC Radio Six Music. It's actually got the word music mm. in its title. Exactly. And so I you're really ready, man. To... You've spotted that, so you're ready. I'm, well, I'm not ready, but I've got until three to really get up to speed with music. Yeah, <laughs> your first show today on Six Music. That's exciting. Very and exciting. what we've done is we've stuck you between myself and Joe. Here, in we, go. Here we go. Hi, Adam, Adam, right? I'm Joe. really building up to this joke. <laughs> 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 you ready? Uh, He's so pleased with this I think, joke. I think this has never now, been listen, done. Before you do the joke i assume Uh, every single tedious pun about your name (laughs) was made within the first two weeks of your broadcasting career so let's see whether you've ever had this one buckley's thinks this is an absolute original fresh out of the oven gem (laughs) i i I think i can see where this is going but what i'm not going to do is preempt the punchline because it would ruin it i'm not walking all over his joke scribble it down and fold it up don't let buckley's see okay hang on okay Okay. dr bacon is is writing down what joke he thinks uh, Adam is going to make. Yeah. He's folding it up now with his prediction. This is sort of like a Darren Brown okay. link. Right, so, so what we do first... But instead of being psychic, Adam's just yeah. amazingly obvious. <laughs> 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 it's sort of really simplified <laughs> psychicness. Psychic. Um, so psychic. we're going to ask... <laughs> we're gonna ask you, <laughs> do you want to see what I've written down, yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to ask you some quick-fire yeah. questions. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 say yeah. I'm going to ask you some quick-fire... I mean, this has never been done before! <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah. Richard Bacon. Hi. What time does your show start today? Three o'clock. How long does it last? Two hours. How old are you? Tw- th- 34. Are you having a good time? Yes. Um, are you currently on the radio with another programme? <laughs> yes. What, what station? Five Live. Do you love the BBC? Yes. Have you read the pledges on the back of your card? No. You should. Okay. Okay. So, that was quick fire questions, right? We were grilling you like a grilled bacon sandwich! Oh, What's he written on the piece of paper? I just put bacon sandwich. You see, he didn't get grilled bacon yeah. sandwich. new, no, no, no one's done the grilled bacon no one's sandwich. Done grilled. That's amazing. I, told you. I thought, I, I thought told you. most of the puns revolving around my meat-based surname had been done by the age of nine. Not the grilled bacon Turns sandwich. out it's taken until 34 for someone to come up with grilled <laughs> bacon sandwich. And you know what I wanted to do, but they wouldn't let me? I wanted to get a nude woman in to <laughs> Wrap her chest around your head so it would be a bacon bap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
not allowed. I was not allowed. No. By the BBC. Protecting, safeguarding trust or whatever. Do you ever get that sense that a man's really found his niche? (laughs) Do you know what I mean? In the world? The uh, the bacon bat, by the way, has been done. Has it? In the past, Uh, yeah. Seriously? I don't want to break your heart. With all the trimmings. But I've heard that one. Adam, this man did, like, you've you've done breakfast radio for how long? Did did you do, you did a breakfast show, right? Yeah. For how long? uh, I've did uh, two or three years. Exactly. Every morning. For how many hours? Yeah, two hours. Every two morning. hours every morning. Imagine the am- amount of puns. And you're, st- you're good looking, man, if you don't mind me saying. I know that's a weird thing to say, but you uh, are a good looking man and you are. Adam has. You've got like a little bit of um, salt and pepper in the hair. Yeah, there, flecks of grey. Which is suiting you very is well. Is it working if out? I may say. I wanted to tell you about what I'm wearing today because I've got this, this jumper on here. Yeah. And you can see it's, there's a scarf. It's very isn't loose, isn't it? And he's got a scarf. It's, it's exactly the same knit the as the jumper. Exactly. It's the same pattern as the uh. jumper. But here's the thing. The scarf is attached to the jump. Get out of here. Honestly, look, okay, go on, undo it. He's Actually, a fashion leader. Look at that. And so, you know, sometimes. It's not true so far, listeners. Okay, you've got it tangled up with his unwinding. headphone cord. Pull, but you can pull one if you want. Adam, you pull one. You oh, look, it is. Look, that's extraordinary. Well, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> look at, you I can see you the see webcam. This. Oh, no. wow. It's for this, isn't it? No, it's not. I know. That's what it's wrapping for, it around his face now. Don't wrap it around his handsome face. Okay, thank you. Now that that wasn't that wasn't. You're <laughs> that's not the purpose of the invention. That's the oh, point. No. This is great radio, isn't it? Uh, um, golf. You can undo him now. Poor guy. He looks as if he's been captured it, by Listen, Al-Qaeda. it's radio. It d- doesn't make any audio difference at all. <laughs> <laughs> Let's waterboard him. <laughs> Who's got a bucket of water and a plank? Uh, yeah. Now, Richard, we yeah. were talking... Uh, uh, so just oh, no, I was, was going to tell you the real advantage of the jumper. Oh, yeah, what is it? Which is that, you know, do you wear scarves sometimes? Do you wear yeah, scarves? sometimes. And, you know, so you go indoors and you can't work out whether or not you want to take the scarf off. Well, this invention has removed that indecision. You can't take it off. No, I can't take it off. So it makes <laughs> it makes my day a little bit easier because I know that, that I don't have to think about it. Yeah. The scarf stays. Because if you do want to take it off, you're going to look like a raving ponce with these big long yeah. trails coming. You look up. like a yeah. sort of a funky monk. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah. thanks. Uh, you know what, Richard? Will you stick around just for a second? Yes, because I want to ask you about your tweeting career. Okay. Okay, uh, but we're going to play Florence and the Machine right now. This is Rabbit Heart. Yeah, all right. Calm down. Florence and the Machine there with the rabbit heart brackets raise the top. And uh, unusually for us, we have a guest in the studio. We've only ever had yeah. two famous people in the studio on this programme. One was uh, Lord Roger Moore. Lord Sir Roger. And now it's Lord Richard Bacon. Hello there. Hey, how you doing? Hi, yeah, good, and the thanks. reason Richard is here is that we're welcoming in uh, Richard to the Six Music family. He starts at three o'clock this afternoon. This very afternoon. Thank the you. Family. Thank, thank it's you. an abusive family. You realise? Yeah. Dysfunctional. Mm. My princess. Anything <laughs> for my princess. <laughs> Joe's the nun. <laughs> All right, my little princess. I'm the what? <laughs> Six Music family. I'm that the came father. out wrong. I didn't I'm mean the that. Pater. The Ponce. I'm the Pater Familias. I'm the Ray Winston character. I want out yeah. of this. Anything this for family. my princess. I'm, I'm the Tony Soprano of the. Family. Shut it. <laughs> now, Richard, uh, we were. Talking before about your tweeting success, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, you love to tweet. You're on Twitter. Not only that, but you are. Am I wrong in saying like the number one most followed person in the UK? That is true. Even beyond Stephen Fry, beyond, Stephen Fry. beyond Jonathan Ross. Yeah. Wow. And do you, have you had any of the problems that Stephen Fry has had? He got a little hurt by a comment the other day and, and sort of said he was going to retire from the tweet verse. Yeah, he did. He did I, I, I occasionally get abuse, um, but I've kind of been used to that. You're I've been a presenter for some time. <laughs> That's and right. made the mistake of looking on forums and things. So, uh, yeah, you get a bit of abuse. You just have to kind of walk it off. The, the reality is I am the most followed, but it's down to a clerical error. Because I, I used to bang on about Twitter in the press when I first started using it. And yeah. Twitter in America were quite pleased about that. And so they put me on their suggested user site. Ah. And there's like a hundred people on the Twitter front page. And I'm the only British person on there. And it goes, John McCain, Demi Moore, Ashton Kutcher, Richard Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> and so people all around the world follow me. Most people who follow me aren't in the UK and they have no idea who I am. Yeah. So when I look at who's following me, there's people in South Korea and China. And quite why they want to read about the fact that uh, I've been to a restaurant and had smoked haddock, I, I yeah. don't know. But then once they start responding to you, this is the thing I don't understand about Twitter. Having I, I went on it briefly for two weeks and then got scared and ran away. Did you? Yeah. And 
I, I, I keep thinking about maybe getting back involved with it because I like the idea of it. But how do you manage all the comments that you're getting from these millions of people? Yeah, you do get a lot. Well, I suppose in the same way that you manage comments that you're getting now on text and I email. Know, millions. You just, oh, yeah, I don't get millions. And, oh, right. You know, some of them you ignore. And a lot of them, as I say, are people who are abroad and uh, follow me for no reason and don't comment on what I say. So I don't really get millions of comments. But what it did pay off last night because I got invited to Downing Street, 10 Downing Street, no. by Sarah Brown because I have these followers on Twitter. I didn't tell her the truth of the matter, which is I don't actually have that many in Britain. Yeah. And, uh, and I went to something called the Downing Tweet. Christmas party. You what? <laughs> How surreal. <laughs> and who was there? Was Gordon Brown wandering around yeah. tweeting? Yeah, Gordon Brown was there. Yeah. Flipping heck, Tucker. So uh, are they not going to put pressure uh, on you to use your tweet power for political good? Well, I mean, of course, in the interest of balance, it is probably important that I now get invited to dinner with the Camerons. Yeah. And um, I mean, we'll. <laughs> No need particularly to go for dinner the with BBC the The BBC are, are very strict about vetting tweets, though, aren't they? Yeah, they're, they're getting stricter, and they're going to start and see what... They're going to check what I write before I sure. put it up there, which will be a little bit strange and a bit difficult. But anyway, I was at this, the, the Downing Tweet Christmas party, which is yeah. a terrible pun for, uh, for a, a party name, and I was chatting to Sarah Brown at the end, and she was banging on about a Six Music presenter. Mm -hmm. So I'll reveal later, when I start my show at three, which Six Music presenter Sarah Brown was banging on about. Whoa, how's that for a tease? Maybe it's good. Gideon Co. What do you mean by banging on? Just, just, well, well, to find out later, Joe. Hmm? No, I'm can't, guessing. You, okay, I'm what are you doing? You're eating up well, my material. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, thank you, uh, well. thank you so much for coming in and she's chatting to us. She's, yeah. No, just keep talking. wash your mind out. Uh, enjoy your show today. Thank you, Welcome Adam. to Six Music. It's wonderful having you. My and I princess. hope you have a wonderful and successful tenure. Please don't swear. <laughs> try and hold yourself back. I know what you're yeah. like. And try and be uncontroversial and try and keep the racism to a minimum. Okay, fine. All right? Fine. Those don't, are my top tips. All right. Avoid political opinions. Don't tell people which party to vote for. Yeah, those that sorts kind of, of things thing. are probably, okay. All okay. your sick jokes that you're used to making. <laughs> it's not a late night show, Richard. I understand. It's a fun family station, okay? okay. I got it. Thank you. All right, here's some music. This is Neil Young, the Cinnamon Girl. Ooh, that's good. Neil Young with Cinnamon Girl. Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. It's time for a few made-up jokes. I'm a funny person. I often make up jokes. My jokes are more amusing than those of other folks. When you hear my joke, I think you'll find that you agree. Come on, you're all invited to a made-up joke party. So this is the part of the show, listeners, where we ask you to submit jokes that you've authored yourself. So every joke we read, the author has claimed that it's their own original work. And many authors are now telling us that they themselves have Google-checked them. Yeah. Uh, so that's the good criteria practice. criteria are very strict, so hopefully these should be jokes you've never heard before. If you have heard them before, then it's either a coincidence or we've been lied to. Here's one from Mike Wheatley. He says, Sherlock Holmes is wandering around his grounds with no, Dr. Watson. No, When no. they see all but one of the fruit trees have had oh, their fruit no. stolen by birds. Oh. This is a good one. Is it? Yeah. The g so you ruined the setup there. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes is wandering around his well, grounds. Well, Sherlock Holmes jokes always have the same punchline. Doesn't matter! With Dr. Watson when they see all but one of the fruit trees have had their fruit stolen by birds. The good doctor pondered why the remaining tree hadn't lost its sweet, nutritious fruit. It's a lemon tree, my dear Watson. Cheers, Mike Wheatley. That's what Sherlock says. Don't search for it's Sherlock. a lemon tree. Sherlock. Come on. Holmes. Obviously, they're all going to be like elementary puns, but that's good. That's good. It's a lemon tree. That's good. You know, <laughs> Sherlock Holmes there published, started being published in 1875. So we're assuming that... Over 200, no, 125 years, no one has made that, but that's a reasonable assumption. Good, good, good. Correct. Uh, here's another one. What do you call a really fun, jovial and jolly person who gives out parking tickets? A terrific warden. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that from? Nial in Huddersfield. Nial. Nial. Uh, that's quite good, isn't it? Yeah, I like that one. Here's one from Tom Pegg in Nottingham. Hello, chaps. I made up this joke this morning inspired by the weather forecast. Which region of England would you describe a man with longer than average... Sorry. Hello. I'll start again. Edit point. Uh, which region of England would you use to describe a man with longer than average privates? East Danglia. East, Dang <laughs> East Danglia. East Danglia. East Danglia. That's quite good. He says, is this too rubbish? It's definitely original. I checked by googling East Anglia, he's Danglia, and it got no results. Thanks and bye, Tom Pegg. 
Uh, this one from John Fraser from Coopar in Fife. Uh, that's in Scotland. What do posh bees in Kensington do when they build a nest in an unusually tall tree? They have a high swarming party. <laughs> that's good, isn't it? So if I pronounced your hometown good. wrong there, John Fraser. Everyone knows I can't pronounce nothing. Excellent. Here's my last one. This is from Andrew. He says, I remember today that I made up a joke about Motown once. I wonder if it qualifies as a made-up joke. It goes like this. It's really cold in Motown. Do you even know what the maximum temperature is? No. No, I don't. What is it? Three degrees, four tops. No, that's funny. I put that one down as well, actually. Come on. Three degrees, four tops. Uh, that's from Andrew. Uh, it's in a John Cleese film. That, what? That Sherlock Holmes joke, so I'm right. It's uh, a lemon tree. Yeah, it's, in a, it's from 1977. Uh, the Strange Case of the End of Civilization as We Know It. Mike, you lied to me, damn you! But, man, I could, dedu I could deduce that one, man. Uh, Joe, have you got one more before we uh, wrap things up? Oh, God, no! Folks, thank you so much for listening this week. Stay tuned for Liz Kershaw. She's coming up. Oh, I have. Sam from Glasgow. He says he's 12. I'm not sure I believe it. Who's the coolest person in the hospital? The ultrasound guy. Who replaces him when he's away? The hip replacement guy. <laughs> Could that have been made up by a 12-year-old? Yes. It's a tissue of lies. Tune in next week at 10am. We'll be back here. Don't forget to download the podcast on Monday Dan evening. Download it, mate. Download it, mate. Uh, here's the auteurs. This is Lenny Valentino. Bye-bye. <laughs>